Welcome to That's Good Broncos, continuing training camp coverage. I am Brandon Perna. In the last episode, I said I didn't learn shit at training camp, but today, with much better visibility of the team practice, I did learn some things. Mainly that Paxton Lynch's biggest issue is accuracy slash consistency. And that when the music switched from turned down for what to sugar pie honey bunch by the four tops, the kickers started dancing. So your full rundown starts now. After the intro plays, the full rundown then will begin. That's good Broncos. I'm going to start with the quarterbacks, since that's the most important sports position on earth. After getting a good look at Lynch, Simeon, and Sanchez running through their scrimmages today, I have to believe there is not a clear-cut favorite to land the job in the group. In fact, the biggest thing I noticed is a lack of leadership from the QB position. You know, when Peyton Manning was out there, you knew who was commanding the team. Right now, Gary Kubiak is commanding the team, which you would expect from the head coach, but you would like to see that emerge from one of the quarterbacks, and it's not happening. Also, today, Simeon looked like the best QB on the field, even though none of them were great. His biggest issue, in my opinion, is how quickly he makes his reads. You can tell he didn't play last year by the amount of time he holds onto the football, and if Mark Sanchez has anything on him right now, it's his ability to make decisions on passing plays more quickly. Gary Kubiak gave Simeon an earful for making an incorrect read during the, his passing drills, but Kubiak was yelling quite a bit, so I wouldn't read too much into it. The only person I heard him compliment was Cody Latimer. Both Sanchez and Simeon finished the day on high notes, leading the offense down the field on drives that ended with touchdowns. Also, that doesn't mean much because even though they are in full pads, contact remains relatively light. Unless, of course, you're a civilian like me, in which case I'd have been blasted out of my pants if I were hit. Paxton Lynch improved at the end of the day, but he missed his first four throws, and some of them were very easy throws, looked uncomfortable out there trying to make his reads. His progression through preseason is going to be like a freaking roller coaster. With a lot of highs and a lot of lows. Today was a low with a lot of missed passes and some in situations where there wasn't even a pass rush. So, uh, if you were to judge by today only, you can bet Paxton Lynch will not be starting for quite some time. In terms of players who are on the rise, look out for Cody Latimer at wide receiver and second year corner Lorenzo Doss. Cody Latimer had a lot of opportunities on the day and I believe he caught every ball thrown his way. Jordan Norwood also looked reliable in passing drills and in scrimmage. Lorenzo Das received praise from uh, the coaches more than once during the day, and he made a great play on Benny Fowler breaking up a pass. If Aqib Tlaib has to sit some games at the beginning of the season due to his pending legal situation, I would not be surprised if Das becomes that third corner used on the field with Bradley Roby and Chris Harris. Also, if Tlaib sits, the Broncos won't only lose one of the best corners in the game, they'll lose a great sideline cheerleader as Tlaib was vocally encouraging the secondary all day long. He was so positive and encouraging that I might have him officiate my wedding at the end of the month. The most interesting thing I learned is that Chris Harris told someone to go find his gold mouthpiece. I'm not sure how safe it is to play with a gold mouthpiece, but I respect the fact that his mouthpiece is worth more than my car. Finally, there is a battle of brewing at the punting position. Watching both Riley Dixon and Britton Colquitt today, it's obvious that Colquitt is the more polished player. He's more consistent with both distance and accuracy. His sideline placement is better, and when he hits it short, it's not drastically a poor punt. Dixon has a stronger leg, but he also varies in consistency. A few punts fell very short, and some of them looked like punts I'd kick in terms of the way the ball wobbled. Colquitt booted a 60-yarder, as did Dixon, but almost all of Colquitt's punts were tight, oh so tight spirals, and that is the most I will talk about punting all year long, I promise. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. I am Brandon Perna. Make sure you subscribe here. Uh, and give me a follow on Twitter at Brandon Perna and check out my friends 
BSN Denver for all of your Denver sports, Rockies, Nugs, Avalanche, the other guys, and Mile High Report posting all of my videos. Those are my best friends, just like it says. Uh, God, I can't wait to talk about a real football game August 11th when the Broncos play in preseason. Till then, it's just going to be a bunch of goddamn practice updates.